Hello, Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. Welcome to Royal Power for Greatness, where you are empowered to walk in your great destiny in Christ without apologies. Royal Power for Greatness is brought to you by Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. It's the world's first one on one Christian and professional mentorship network for all youth and young adults across the body of Christ worldwide. My name is Wesley Ogude. If you are there as a youth or young adult, anywhere in the world and you're born again i am your royal brother you are my royal brother you are my royal sister but if you're there listening to me and you're wondering what does royal brother royal sister mean what does it mean to be born again that would suggest to me that perhaps you're yet to have the opportunity to become a member of god's amazing global family of believers i make a promise to you to give you the opportunity someone extended to me graciously over 30 years ago and forever i'm grateful eternally my life changed. I promise that at the end of this conversation, I will give you that opportunity. In today's episode of Royal Power for Greatness, I am super excited um, to bring you an episode I have titled, There are good and bad deaths, part one. Now this is episode 35. Now remember this is a conversation, so again, send your questions your comments you know your thoughts to me at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com i will make time to address yeah, your questions and comment you can also um reach out to us if you think that god is you know ministering to you to be part of our, our global team of you know believers who are you know serving youth and young adults across the body of christ as long as you're born again we'll take through through and you know a process you know to onboard you so that you can join us to continue to serve um, in this privileged position to serve the, the body of christ the, the the younger generations across the body and please remember to subscribe to all our channels across all platforms and you know please share this with your friends and families particularly youth and young adult please don't keep it to yourself now in today's episode um, we will be answering to uh, three questions what does the bible teach about death that's the first question number two has god ever used death to prosper anyone in the bible and number three how can i apply these principles from the bible to create wealth those are the three questions very very important questions we are going to we're going to tackle here now by way of opening comments from a careful study of scriptures and analysis of subject of death globally okay i discovered that what the bible teaches on death is accurately supported by the statistics of the impact of death on nations i repeat that again i'm saying that i did a research I looked at, I studied carefully what the Bible teaches us about death, okay? And then I looked at the statistics of nations. I've also looked at my personal experience, but I wanted to look at it because the word of God cannot fail. It will always hold true at any level. So I went to the highest level and looked at it globally across the entire economies of the world. And I'm gonna share my findings with you, okay? So what the Bible teaches, perfectly lines up with what I discovered, okay? Now, my discovery is that the size of the debt that a, con a nation is owing is not the issue, but the type of the debt a nation owes or a person and what they did with that debt will make them to be either rich or poor. In other words, if you have good debt and you use debt wisely, it's called leverage. You will see prosperity. But if you use it poorly, which is bad debt, then that, that nation or that person will suffer setback. For example, according to worldpopulationreview.com, in 2023, the United States has the largest debt on the planet with a debt of 29.5 trillion US dollars. Yet it remains the richest country in the world with a gross domestic product, GDP. Gross domestic product or GDP measures the productivity of a, of a nation. It, it measures, call it the wealth of a nation, okay? So the GDP of the US, which is, you know, which is the largest, far largest, is 23.3 trillion in 2023. Interesting, 
Okay, but it's not just the US, not just one country. Interestingly, my research confirms that by 2023, the top three largest debtor nations in the world are also the top three wealthiest countries in the world. According to um, Wise Voter, right, US, Japan, and China have the largest debts. They are as follows. US, 29.5 trillion US dollars. Japan, 13 trillion US dollars. That's their, the size of their debt. And China, 10 trillion. That's the, those are the biggest, you know, uh, all, you know, debtors in the entire world. They also have the largest GDP. Okay, right? US has a GDP of 23.3 trillion US dollars. Like I said earlier, China, 17.7 trillion, right? US dollars. And Japan, 4.9 trillion. So the largest debtor nations are also the largest borrowers. So the question is this, but doesn't the Bible say that, you know, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7 people quote and say the borrower is servant to the lender so are you going to say that china and us and japan are servant to any other nation no way they are not they are not servants they, they in military power in economic power you can't describe them as servants so is the bible wrong no that proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 is talking about bad debts when you have bad debts you will see it now but when you have good debts Jesus told the man who used good debt in Luke chapter 19. He said, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in something little. That's good debt. Good debt, when you use it well, is commendable. And in that particular parable, Jesus told us that that man who used the debt and multiplied the money that he was loaned from 5 to 10, the scripture says that he was promoted to become ruler of city. That doesn't look like a servant. Okay, so that's good debt. All right. So the reason why this confusion is that, you know, we have thought that every debt is the same in the Bible. It is not the same. There are good debt and there are bad debt. The answer is very simple. Good debt will make you rich. Bad debt will make you poor. On a personal note, my wife and I have also found that, you know, to be absolutely true, God's word can never fail. In God's word, when you use debt wisely, you are promoted. When you use it poorly, you are a servant to a lender. So servant to a lender, Proverbs 22, 7, does not apply in every situation. Okay? There are people who use debt. Jesus spoke himself in, in Luke chapter 19. So people who use debt wisely said, good and faithful servant. So if you are good and faithful with the use of other people's money, you will make wealth and you will be respected. That's what China us and japan have done the statistics is there it lines up perfectly with the word of god so i'm thrilled to share some of the insights with with youth and young adults across the whole world you know across the body of christ you know we are called to to, to serve so that they can properly understand and walk in wisdom and in the will of god so that they can walk in the reality of the wealth that jesus died to purchase for us so let's go to the first question. What does the Bible teach about debt? The Bible does not teach only one single thing about debt, you know? So it teaches several things. I would like to share six of those things with us, okay? I will cover three in this part one, just to keep the conversation short, and I will cover the other three in part two. So in this, but let me tell you the six I want to, I want to share with us that the Bible teaches about debt. Okay, number one, the business of borrowing and lending money okay, to earn interest is scriptural and there's nothing wrong with it. That's what banks do. I used to be a banker for many, many years. Many of us have borrowed to buy houses or we have mortgages. So that is very scriptural. Borrowing money okay, is scriptural and paying interest or lending money and collecting interest, which is what banks do, okay, is very scriptural. Number two, to borrow is not a sin, but to borrow and deliberately not pay back is wickedness. It's wickedness. So the whole idea of, oh, you know, I'm going to borrow and then I'll declare bankruptcy if you're a believer, don't do such things. It's wickedness. The Bible describes it as wickedness. Franklin Roosevelt is the one that said that the, the, the creditor has a better record than the debtor. 
There are many people when they borrow money, particularly, you know, family and friends, when they borrow money, that's it. They forget completely. Some will even have the audacity. After borrowing money from you, they won't even pay back. The next time they see you, they won't even talk about it. Guess what? The next time they are going to talk to you again is when they need another money. They come back to come and borrow. Men, don't do such a thing. That the scripture describes as wickedness. If you borrow money from somebody, if that money is not yet ready to be paid, you know you can't. You can go to the person, hey, I've not forgotten. Or you can sit down and do a payment plan and things like that. So that's number two thing. So borrowing and not repaying back deliberately is wickedness. Number three, there is good debts and bad debt in scripture. Good debts makes people richer and bad debt makes people poorer. I share the statistics with you, okay, earlier. Now, that's number three thing the Bible teaches us. I will walk you through. Number four, if we must borrow, it should be good debt and we must pay back. Bible teaches that clearly. That's number four. Number five, it is God's will for us to be completely debt free. That's his will for us to be completely debt free. Good debt, bad debt and all that. But there's a process to it. Even the people of God, they started by borrowing. God told them to go and borrow in Egypt. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. You know, before Moses told them in the wilderness, in Deuteronomy 28, they would lend to nations and not borrow. God had already told them to borrow in Egypt. Okay? Right? Read your Bible, you see that. We'll see that there. So it's a process. It may not be day one. Okay? So if we must, it is God's will, but that we become debt free completely. Now, God's perfect will for us is not only to be debt free. Okay? The Bible teaches us that it is God's will for us to lend to nations. Those are the things the Bible talks about. So, Bible doesn't condemn borrowing and, and things like that. But, Bible frowns at borrowing and not paying back. And the Bible does not you know approve of us borrowing to make ourselves more um you know to be poorer it is not wisdom okay so that those are the six things we're going to cover three here so the first one is that okay number one the business of borrowing and lending money to earn interest is very scriptural right there in your bible leviticus chapter 25 verse 26 nkjv Watch this if you lend money. Can you see that? If you lend money to any of my people who are poor among you, you shall not be like money lenders to him. You shall not charge him interest. So money lenders charge interest. But God was telling the Old Testament uh, you know, Jews not to charge interest. But the lending is still there. The point to be made here is that lending money and charging interest, if they will go and borrow from non-Jews, of course, they will charge them interest. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 9, um, NKJV, the Bible says that to a foreigner, watch this, you may charge interest. So God was telling them, if you lend to a foreigner, you can charge interest, okay? But to your brother, you shall not charge interest. That the Lord your God may bless you in all to which you set your hand in the land which, which you are entering to possess. So you can see that. So God says, don't charge interest with your brother but foreigners you can charge interest so the business of lending and charging interest is very legit and it's very scriptural it's in the book of luke chapter 19. then the king the king said to the servant this is jesus telling us uh, the parable of uh, the uh, the talents in luke luke chapter 19. so i read this is verse 22 then the king said to the servant you evil servant I will use your mouth, your own words, to condemn you. You said that I am a hard man. You said that I even take money that I didn't earn and gather food I didn't plant. If this is true, then you should have, watch this, put my money in the bank. Then when I come back, my money would have earned in some interest. This came from the lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see there, Jesus in that parable, right, was telling us that the expectation was for this lazy servant who didn't do anything with the money, that just buried it, the expectation that at least put it in the bank. So the scripture recognizes that putting money in the bank and earning interest is a wise thing to do. The next thing the Bible teaches us, number two, is to borrow is not a sin. But to borrow and deliberately not pay back is wickedness. The King James Version of the Bible says this, Exodus chapter 11 verse 2. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man, watch this, borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor. Jewel, silver and gold, 
jewels of silver and jewels of gold. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 35, King James Version now, the Bible says, And the children of Israel did, watch this, in that 11, Exodus 11, 2, God told the Israelites through Moses to go and borrow uh, from the Egyptians. And in Exodus chapter 12, verse 35, the scripture says they did it. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed, watch this, they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Of course, we know that later in the wilderness, when God wanted uh, Moses to build the tabernacle, these were the same things that they borrowed that they invested in the kingdom. So they borrowed, that was good debt right there, okay? Because God instructed them to do it and for good reason as well, okay? So to borrow is not a sin. But to borrow and not pay back, Psalm, in Psalm 27 verse 21, the common English version of the Bible, ICB. The scripture says, watch this, the wicked borrow and don't pay back. The wicked borrow and don't pay it back. Did you see that? The wicked. So it's wickedness to borrow and not pay back. So if you are owing your cousin, you are owing your friends, you are owing your mother, you are owing your father, you are owing your pastor, you are owing the bank, and you are not paying deliberately, you are looking for a way to escape, a way to, the Bible describes it as wickedness. We shouldn't do that. The wicked borrow and don't pay it back. But the righteous are generous and giving. Okay? So those are the two things that we cover. Now, let's look at number three things that the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us that there is good debts and there is bad debts in the Bible. Good debt and bad debt. Let me use a scripture that Holy Spirit used to teach me this. Let me share that with you. So the point here is this. The Bible teaches us that there is good debt and bad debt in the Bible. Good debt makes people richer. Bad debt makes people poorer. It's clear. Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. Let me read this to you. I'm reading from the New King James Version. A certain woman of... The wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my, my two sons to be his slaves. This is the typical situation where the borrower is a servant to the lender. Why? Because this is a bad debt, and I will show you in a few minutes. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, again, look at it, go borrow. If borrowing is a sin, you can see, ironically, God is using borrowing to solve borrowing. The first borrowing was a bad debt. Watch this. The next borrowing here is a good debt. You'll see why I said that. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, Empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Borrow them. Borrow a lot. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your, and your sons. Then pour it into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is no another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came to the, to the, to, and told the man of God. And he, that is the man of God, said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons live on the rest. May God bless the reason of his word. In this story, there are some profound principles. Let me point them out as the Holy Spirit showed me them. Number one, there are five principles here about good debt and bad debt. Number one, this is a classic of a bad debt at the beginning. This woman's husband apparently borrowed some money. Okay, It is obvious that he didn't use the money to do business. He didn't use it to buy any assets. Why do we know that? Because if he used it to buy a house, for example, it is not the two sons they will come for. They will come for the house. They will come for the collateral. I'm a banker. Okay? I used to be a banker. And I'm a trained banker. And I'm an investor today. I know that when I go to borrow from the bank and buy a property as a real estate investor, I don't use my children as collateral. 
I used the property. So there was no property there. So that made it a bad debt. It's a classic bad debt. That's number one. Okay? Number two, this is a classic case of a slave, you know, being a slave to a lender. Notice that the creditors were coming for the two sons, okay, of this woman. If the man had used the money to acquire an asset that appreciated, which would have made it a good debt, the debtors would have come, you know, if the debtor came around, all the woman would have done was just to sell the asset and pay the debtor off, and then she would even have some money, which of course was the solution that, you know, Elisha, gave to her by the instruction of God. You can see God now replacing a bad debt with a good one. Can you see that? Right there in your Bible. It's right there. Now, number three. Notice this same problem was solved using another borrowing. Like I said. But this time, the vessel was to be used to produce value. Not to sell the neighbor's vessel. Use the vessel to produce. So, the, the bank loan becomes a vessel, for example, symbolically. So what my wife and I have done over the years is this. Since God taught us all of this, uh, we trained, we read books, we got mentors' help, and we prayed and did all that. And then we started taking steps. We went to the bank, and we borrowed money. It was a vessel, and we used it to buy property. And now that property, we are using it to service other people's needs. And in rent is coming in, and we are now paying off the debt. You can see that's good debt. That's exactly what they did. They said, go borrow the vessel, use it to create value, and then sell the value, and then pay off your debt. Not only pay off your debt, you will also be able to, you know, pay your, um, uh, live on the rest. So notice, number four, notice she uses the vessel now to pay her debts. Good debt this time around. Technically, who paid the good debt is the people who bought the oil that paid the good debt. Who pays our debts today? Right? It's our tenants who pay the debt. It's the same principle right there. It's right there in your Bible. That's good debt. The debt that you owe and someone else pays it is a good debt. The debt that you owe and you have to pay it yourself is a bad debt. Okay? So if you have a car loan now, you pay it yourself. But if you have a car and you're using it for Uber, then the, the revenue from Uber will pay off. That becomes, makes it a good debt. So it's not the size of your debt, just like the nations we saw. It's what do you use it for. So U.S., for example, borrows money all over the world. They invest it in technology. They invest it in science. They create jobs. They create factories. Boom! The, 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 nations grow, the nation grows. Other nations say, no, oh, no man, nothing. And we can't even find those nations on the radar. They are not developed. And some will go and borrow. Guess what they will use the money to do? Eat it, like the prophet, that prophet there. So to be spiritual does not mean you will be smart with money. There are many, many spiritual people out there that their money sense really needs a lot of help from, from the Holy Spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit helped me and my wife. Okay? So number four, notice she uses the vessel now to pay her debt. That is good debt. This time, Helping her to get out of the financial hole. So that is good debt. And then number five, notice she returns the borrowed vessel. She returned it. So when, for example, by God's grace today, my wife and I, literally, <laughs> our debts, our good debt are in the millions. Literally. But we pay back. We pay back. Every month we pay the mortgages. We pay all of those things. As, you know, rent comes and we pay back, you know, and, and things like that. And then whatever is left creates wealth for us. And that's why I don't go to work 9 to 5 like many people do. I use the excess cash flow, you know, to meet, to run our company and things. It's the exact same thing that you see in that scripture. Okay? May God give you wisdom as you listen to this. No, so notice that she returned the, the, the borrowed vessel. Okay? She returned it. Okay? But ironically, she did with the vessel where the, what the owners of the vessel could not do with it. Today, for example, if you're an investor and you know how to invest, when people give money to the banker, the banker doesn't keep it in their vaults. They lend it. So if you go and put your money in the bank and they're giving you 2% and all you are saving, I'll go there. The bank gives it to me. I use it to buy a property. I pay it back. They give you 2%. I own a property. Okay? So who, who, has used, who has used the money wisely? Of course, the person who borrowed it. That's why in Luke chapter 19, Jesus commended the guy who used debt wisely. So there is good debt. In the Bible, there is bad debt. I just walked you through. May God give you all of us wisdom. Great. So let's answer the second question. Has God ever used debt to prosper anyone in the Bible? Before we answer this question, let's take a, good, a quick break. I'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Mental.
mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS. Thank you so much. Welcome back. So let's answer the second question. Has God ever used death to prosper anyone in the Bible? The answer is absolutely yes. Yes, a number of times. In this episode, I will, I will walk you through the story of the widow. God, you, let's use that. Number one, God used that borrowing of the vessel. Borrowing, any kind of borrowing, you know, it's leverage, whether it's money or whatever. You know, it's the same concept. What doesn't belong to you, you go to borrow it, right? Okay, God used the borrowed, the borrowed vessel to get her out of debt. Number two, God used the borrowed vessel to deliver her two sons from slavery. So borrowed vessel today, money that we borrow from bank, delivered me from nine to five. That's why I can do what God has asked me to do today. For 25 years, I worked. I had no assets. I had no assets. My house was a liability. But today that has changed. So God... God used a good debt to deliver these two sons. And today God has used good debt to deliver me and my family from struggle. Number three, God used borrowed vessels, you know, to give her enough for her to live on practically. That was financial independence. So when I say on this channel that by the grace of God, until I take my last breath, I will never need a company, I will never need a government to send paycheck to me and I will never carry another resume. Why? This is the secret. Okay? And again, I add the caveat. Please, when I say this, it is not that I have arrived, my wife and I have arrived. No, we have not. But we have applied these things and it has worked. And God will also help you to be able to apply it with the help of mentors. Okay? And I always add a caveat. Please don't send email to me. We don't lend money. Okay? And I said it earlier before. Uh, sometime I said this and somebody but they were just writing email I, I want to close my house please don't do that um, listen to it take it take the lesson and prayerfully implement it it's better for you to learn how to catch the fish than for someone to give you the fish if i waited for my mentor to give me the fish i would not be here sharing this with you okay all right so those are so how can i apply this again we are going to go through three ways to apply there are six ways to apply we'll cover three here number one pay off anyone you are owing Okay, or put a repayment plan in place. That's the place to start from. Get rid of, of debts, bad debt, debt that you don't even know what you did with it. You went to use it to buy or whatever, you know, you know, um, you know, brand name or you use it to do party or whatever, you know, pay it off. It's wickedness to owe and deliberately not pay. So, you know, God normally shuts the door of favor against such people. Number two, pay off any bad debt. They make you poorer. We've seen it in the scripture. And number three, position yourself to be able to access good debt and learn how to use good debt to responsibly create wealth. I will do an episode on that if you continue to follow this channel. In other words, position yourself to have access to good debt and use that good debt to do things that will liberate you financially. That's how to do it. So in wrapping up, um, in this episode, I mean, it's been an exciting one. Um, you know, 
we answer three questions okay what does the bible teach about debt i walked you through extensively and uh, we answered that question has god ever used debt to prosper anyone in the bible it depends on the debt we have also seen that the answer is yes good debt and then number three how can i apply these principles from the bible to create wealth we also went through that of course we went through you know part of the answers and the other balance of the answers we will cover in the part two of this episode i cannot wait you know for another you know two weeks and uh, you know to bring that your way um but before i finally close this i want to keep my promise to anyone that is out there that you don't know the lord jesus christ we've been talking about wealth we've been talking about money and things like that of course god wants us to be uh, to be prosperous jesus died and he became poor so that you and i can be wealthy right but material wealth will take we will not take it anywhere the scripture says in hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 that it is appointed unto man wants to die and after death there is judgment and the scripture says that we did not bring anything to this world and it is certain we cannot carry anything out first timothy chapter 6 verse 7 okay so it is extremely important that we be saved and we live a life that pleases god so that when it is all over, where we can't carry our money, our property, our assets to anywhere, our souls can be saved. This is how Jesus put it in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 to 7. He said, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So God does not want you and I to lose our soul. Somebody gave me this same opportunity. It was on the 19th of July, 1987, over 35 years ago. My life changed forever. So I want you, if you are there, you, gave your, you want to give your life to Christ for the first time, or you gave your life to Christ before, but something happened, you got disconnected. I am not here to condemn you, and God is not condemning you. God is not angry with you, but he's calling you lovingly back home. I want you to please bow down your head and say this simple prayer with me by faith. You can close your eyes or choose to open it. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I believe you died for me and on the third day you rose again i accept you today as my personal lord and savior in jesus name if you pray that prayer sincerely i believe with the whole of my heart that you got born again now i want you to please find a bible believing church near you to start to attend so that you can be in the midst of a community of believers so to help you grow um, in this kingdom there are no orphans we all belong to a local church including myself and my family also i want you to please go to um, our website www.royalyouthforchrist.com and click on rbrs and then click on rbrs convert complete the form and someone from our team will reach out to you know to you so that we can further help you as you begin your journey with christ jesus christ i am you know super excited and i can't wait for the second part of this very important episode rightly dividing the word of god by the wisdom of the holy spirit so this will bring us to the end of this episode um until i come your way next time I am your royal brother, Wesley Ogude. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, 
outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at RuralYouthForChrist.com forward slash RBRS.